Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What is the significance of reciting the, the names? Yeah, any names that you recite its significance is to be dressed by its reality and blessed by its reality. On such a holy night and you know the powers that come in Salatul Taraweeh which is Qiyam al-Layl, time in which you meditate and pray that, Ya Rabbi that whatever association these souls are having that to be dressed by them. And as soon as you mention heavenly name Tanzilur Rahmah that as soon as you mention heavenly names the soul itself doesn't have to be in the, in the authority of the body. The soul of these realities they begin to dress anyone who mentions their name from whatever Allah has given to them. Means that, oh your student mentioned my name and they begin to send their fires and send their lights. What realities these souls control and, and what Allah has partitioned of realities upon them is something unimaginable. To love them, to call upon them and to be asked to be dressed by them so that Allah dress and perfect our character and to inshaAllah be with them as the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi is coming closer and closer and to, to be dressed by this Mahdiyun light and these eternal realities and these eternal stations that these names have. These names are like maqams. So when one passes another shaykh will enter into that maqam, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How do you purify your heart of bitterness? How do you purify your heart of bitterness? <laughs> yeah, you, you, the same way you purify your heart of all of its bad character is that you have to just uh, let things go and, and uh, find what role you play in everything. That uh, shaitan's biggest trick is to make you the victim of circumstances, that you're the victim and somebody is doing something wrong to you. If you're a person who is able to meditate and, and meditate and make your connection, you don't meditate by yourself because then shaitan is sitting with you playing in your meditation, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that, oh you're great, you're great. The whole concept of the madad is to make sure you had a shaykh there. So when you're meditating, I'm asking my shaykh to be present with me, I feel my shaykh is… You know why people don't like to meditate and make their madad? Because they don't want to hear what the shaykh has to tell them. And then, oh, and then I got to really react on it and do it what he's telling me and so they don't want to make their madad. They say, but I meditate, but if you meditate without madad and the shaykh is not there you're not going to be real. You're just going to meditate with shaitan, you're just going to tell you everything, you're this, you're that, you're, you're flying in the heavens, you're the highest one, you reached the ocean nobody ever reached. <laughs> so all of these are the, the, the waswases of, of shaitan. The, the, the one that, that perfects us is that when we make the madad with the shaykh and the shaykh is there to keep your fires upon me, I don't have to see you, it's not my ego, I just have to know that you're there and you mention the names of the shaykh so that shaitan doesn't come. As soon as you mention their name they're there. You don't just say madad to whoever wants to come, please madad somebody come, no because then shaitan will be there. But you ask by names like GPS that you mention the names of the shaykhs and as I want to be in their presence that their nazar be upon me and I want to begin to make my hisab. And their fire is there will begin to push into your heart what you did wrong. And this instant that you're, you're upset about what is the role that you played in it because they're never there to verify and, and to give a trophy to your nas. They want you to know that what you've done wrong in that situation then why Allah is sending that so that you're not only the victim that you understand, oh maybe it's not like that and, and maybe I'm playing a role in putting this uh, bitterness together. And and this is the whole power of the hisab is taking an accounting and an accounting of ourselves so that we can identify what we're doing wrong and <coughs> what we're feeling wrong. So many, many examples of it but I can't go into it because uh, just people's lives. They find themselves the victim, they think they're the victim and reality when, when they think about it, no actually they, they got a lot of benefits, they're not the victim. 
But shaitan fooled you to think you're a victim and then go out now and say, woe is me and why has happened to me, what's like this to me. You don't even look at the good. So what are you talking about? You have this, you have food, you have house, you have car, you have all these nice things you didn't thank Allah for and you think you're a victim of something and that's how shaitan plays and you know manipulates people. Whatever money you lost Allah took it from you, whatever job you lost Allah fired you. So what are you worried about? Now do good and have Allah regain your status. So it's take out the, the middleman and the characters and deal only with Allah That are we good with Allah and uh, not to, to worry about the past? Don't think about the future but right now in this present time am I doing what Allah wants from me and we try to, to build that type of character. Because if you're able to survive with that character then everything in the past a wisdom will come, oh my gosh that's why this happened. It may take a year for you to find out or two years or ten years I've, you figure out that why that happened at that time, it's clear now why it happened. Allah wanted to open something. So Allah's filled with love and has the, the best of, of openings, the best of those whom give. Just we have to have patience to endure inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How does one attain the family inheritance like our master Hazrat Salman al Farsi? Forgive me for bad adab. No, alhamdulillah, walaykum as wa rahmatullah. That's the, what we talked about is to be a life of service. That uh, to love Prophet <coughs> be of service. So, the service is in the Muhammadan way. Someone said that, can I go wash cars of people and that would be a service, say, no that would be just giving free car washes to a bunch of people that don't necessarily need a free car wash. You go out and wash the cars, make the money and donate to the Muhammadan way, not to Wahhabis, not to these people that are going to fight the Muhammadan way. So being of service means anything that I'm doing in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad You have some money you want to go feed people, go feed people and uh, do it with uh, an image that promotes the Muhammadan way and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So there's so many ways to be of service that uh, you live a life in that khidmat and that's what opens the nazar of Prophet that these people are doing this love for me and as a result my love with them and you be with whom you love. If Prophet loves you of course he's going to make that servant a family member because he loves them like a family, he loves them because they love him InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Um, what type of promises have we made? What type of promises have you made? <laughs> Good ones I would imagine, yeah, you, you promised everything to Allah and uh, that's why we had that whole talk on that subject is that uh, everybody when Allah fashioned the souls and I'm not your Lord and He one by one said, these are the things that you will do and we said, Mali, yes we accept. Then shaitan knows that when we're going to come to earth he's going to make us forget everything we promised. And that's the one that Prophet said, believer can be many things but he cannot lie. And it wasn't dunya lies, the, the reality was he cannot lie about this promise. He can't say, no I didn't promise that because Allah in that holy verse that we gave that night declares, no I took the promise and I have witnesses from the angels and the, the men of understanding, they witnessed the, what you promised. So it's like a court of law, you can't say I was just alone and promised and I didn't promise it. Allah will bring the witnesses and say, no this, this soul did promise that. And that's why there's no need to, to you know, to, to, to have so much remorse. The one whom sick he asked and accepted from Allah the one whom left very early in life they asked and Allah they Allah asked and they accepted. The people on earth don't understand what's happening, oh why, why if there's a God there's so much suffering. You say, no there's a God because He's… they've accepted to come to this earth to suffer because they were given a, a very high degree in the hereafter. 
So don't get involved in their case, that's not how to, to figure out the existence of Allah because they don't believe in the hereafter. They, they believe that everybody should have a Ferrari in the, in the world and that should be good. But Allah says, you're in an abode you can't see. If you could see my paradises and see how huge and how vast I'm going to give you of a paradise and He says, okay you come in and do this and you're going to end your life short, you're going to have this, you're going to have this. So, yeah sure I'll take that real short, I'm going to take that big huge paradise. He says, yeah that's all yours, okay, Ghali <laughs> bala. <laughs> then when you came onto earth you complained, what is this, what is this? And then, oh look this guy he left at such a young age, why he left at such a young age? How is there a God with something like this is happening, he left behind this, he left behind that. He said, don't get involved in, in, in that issue. But because there is a God and He had given him what He wanted to give him and the soul of that person accepted that reality and they reached to their destiny. Our life is about achieving our destiny and whatever is our fate is to face it. You can't run from your destiny especially if you don't know what your destiny is. That's why when you follow the shaykhs they try to complete your destiny. That's the whole reason, that's again the talk that we gave for istiqam. Keep firm on the tariqah because it's not that I'm just calling myself Naqshbandi tomorrow I don't have to call myself Naqshbandi. The tariqah is in existence to bring you to your ahad and your covenant. Whatever they want to call their name, their job is to take you to your covenant. So when you leave the shaykh, don't care you left his name or you left this or you left that, what you left is your ability to reach your covenant. Because don't think you and yourself and shaitan are going to find your covenant, you'll be far from ever reaching that reality. The shaykh's purpose and the shaykh's reality take you to your ahad, what was your covenant and promise to Allah and to raise you as a rijal with their fires, with their zikrs, with their associations with whom Allah has dressed them with, every association with them is immediately in their presence with their shaykhs. You can't achieve something like that by yourself, you didn't reach to that. So the person shaitan wants to put everybody would sit in their own room by themselves and shaitan sit there, where are they going to go, where are they going to be lifted? The shaykh's soul is like a high speed elevator and 99% of humanity walks into a building, sees, oh my god where's the meeting? It's on the 99th floor, how am I supposed to get there? Stairs. Because you didn't achieve anything so you're going to take the stairs to go 99 stories up. By the fourth floor you're out of breath, so I can't do it, this is crazy. And Allah created then the souls of these shaykhs. They're high speed elevators because they're always in that presence, always moving. We just describe the numbers through the meditation. As soon as you stand in their presence, their soul is already moving in that reality. They immediately your light went into their light and right up to the 99th floor. And you don't even know it happened, you don't have to know it happened. And you'd be dressed by that 99th floor, you'd be dressed by all those realities. And then after a while you've done that for so long you begin to think that it was actually maybe you that was going to the 99th floor. And that's the dangers from the soul talks and the and nafs talks. And then you say, oh, I don't need these people, I'll just go myself. And then you go back by yourself and you find, hey I'm not going up there anymore. No you gotta take the stairs again. And they, ah oh, this is too tiring and I leave and that's why many people then just drift away. Yeah, so this is a, a big danger when the, when the shaykh passes and the shaykh leaves and they lose their connection and stop the practices, all of a sudden you look at them and they, they, they left everything. They stopped going into that presence, they lost their form, they lost their understanding and now they're taking the stairs, it's too, too much, too much work and I'm out of here and they find themselves no longer in that presence. It's not easy to achieve, it's not something that uh, was easily achieved and what Allah had put these people through of difficulties. So alhamdulillah it's a ni'mat, that's why we say it's a, it's a gift from God, the high speed elevator. You just have to attend their associations and immediately you're in the presence of where they are.
and your soul is being dressed, you're being uh, recharged, all your lataifs are being recalibrated, everything spiritually that happening to you, you can't imagine. When they make zikr, what type of zikr is thrown onto your soul, onto your heart and onto your entire being? How much of your entire lineage they'll clean of all the bad in the back and all the bad in the front? And this just from the power of their soul, that's something that can't be understood. Somebody had uh, communicated and just for understanding that in the last days said that uh, uh, seeing like hor horrific events were coming and uh, these explosions were coming everywhere and all of a sudden these souls appeared to me and <clears throat> they sat in our presence and they, they started to teach me and they said, we're going to sit right now, we're going to teach you how to take a breath, take a breath. And as soon as he said, take a breath, a light encompassed all around. And all of a sudden I felt that I was in a bubble of a light of that person's soul and a bomb went off, explosion went off and <sighs> but nothing happened within that circle of that reality of that power. This is just a drop in the understanding of what Allah has given to servants of their ability. They can put their entire light over entire cities if Allah won't. So this is not something that can be understood. You can't even say no because, قُلْ, uh, قُلْ اللَّهُمَّ مَلِكُ الْمُلْكِ جُوزُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Allah give the kingdom, who can say no? Then you're saying, no Allah doesn't have that ability? Oh the jinn have the ability, imagine that the shaykhs who are much more powerful than that if Allah opened for them the jinn reality and the angelic reality. They'll have the power of angels and the power of jinn and they balance all of them. So it means th this is something can't even be imagined that what Allah will open that's necessary for people to survive what's coming. So if we can't understand that then can you understand the daily interactions and what's happening and when you're a service to them and what you're doing and what their soul is doing for people that can't be understood. Their one day is this 1400 years of ibadah. So imagine then accompanying them for one day what type of life is being dressed upon the servants and these realities. And that's why their light is growing so fast compared to people whom just doing nothing. They go for Jummah and go home. Islam is very easy, you can just go for Jummah and go home. There's not a, a way of making Islam hard. But this is a, like a beyond PhD understanding that, no I want to reach my covenant. So this is not about you guys make Islam hard, no, no Islam is easy, it's kindergarten, go back to kindergarten. But if you want to reach your, your contract and your reality that's not something, that's not something easy at all. And that's why then there's such a struggle and struggle with the character to reach towards these lights and these blessings inshaAllah. SubhanAllah Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaam Alhamdulillah You have a good one? Yeah, <laughs> I have one question. Okay, <laughs> one more, one more inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. InshaAllah could, could you please explain, uh, provide guidance on what we could do when we have been told someone is from the family of Sayyidina Muhammad but we have negative experience around them. We have felt something is not right around them, our heart doesn't feel good around them and feel things don't add up when around them. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that, 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 that's, the, that's the most common that, that we're what we're talking about are the shaykhs and guides <clears throat> is to find a life and an association with the shaykhs and that you can visualize through your eyes that the actions are correct, the, the manner of speech is uh, the inheritance is soft, is loving and then alhamdulillah Allah guide, Allah may guide you first to some bad shaykhs. That's also good right? So you have to go sometimes to eat bad food <laughs> to appreciate a good Iranian restaurant. <laughs> right? You eat some, some real bad imitation, he's like, what the heck was that? I want to go back to where his chala kebab is. <laughs> so that's always the, you know, Allah's, Allah's grace and rahmah is that we, we don't know what we're doing. You have to travel, you have to go around. That's why it's called salik is a seeker, not, not the one found is that you take a life as I want to set out my Lord towards your Divinely way. 
but with good manners. So you go somewhere, sit, you see this shaykh, he's smoking, he's yelling, he's screaming, he gets his siwak and he throws it at somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen all of those. We've seen some chalabis <laughs> down, start making cigarettes, all the murids light up cigarettes and so you stay quiet and just, Ya hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And these are the experiences that are necessary in life because Allah yeah you go around and, and figure it out, stay with good manners, stay quiet, stay quiet until you find the one that's right and then your heart tells you, this is, this is right, this is the way that I was envisioning, this is the way I thought the companions were, I thought this is the way that the, the, the grace and their love and their character was. And it's with all those experiences that were necessary for you to have your eyes to open what was really good divine food. We've been to association there's no food, not had its own reality. That how you, you're teaching Allah's way, you don't put any food out. The food is a ni'mat and carries all the blessings. So everything will start to show itself by our experiences, we'll figure out which one is, is loving and which one is right and which one is the sweet by tasting the bitter. So there's a hikmah and wisdom and everything, we just have to have the patience to, to go through it inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.